Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Apostate Weekly. I'm your host, James. And I'm Ryan. And let's roll that intro. Welcome back, everybody, to it's Wednesday, August 9th, 2023, and we've had some big stories break this week. Um, I don't know if anybody's heard about the uh, UK charity inquiry and what they their findings were for the witnesses, so we're going to be going over that this morning. <sighs> we got Leah Remini is suing Scientology, so go, go Leah. Leah. She- we love Leah. She is such she handles a badass. business. Man, fierce. I tell you what, is she not I, fierce? I loved watching her show Scientology in the me aftermath too. because that like, helped me. When I was watching it, it was like you could always compare the cults, especially when you're waking up, and you could see the similarities that they both have. And then at the same time, her fierceness and her tenacity, and you could. You could just tell that just by how she was talking and acting, she was not being an actress on that show. She was being mm-hmm. a human being wanting to help others escape that vicious cult. And yes. so you she could really, passion. yes, you could really see that coming through in how she handles things. And, you know, with her and then uh, Rinder, who had to retire because of, some cancer issues excuse me but just phenomenal people you know using their celebrity status to do some real good good in this world yeah which is exactly very refreshing and her friend is it mike i can't think of the um gentleman she's really close with who also mike and i is so sad that he's um has a cancer diagnosis, correct? I hope he's doing it well. I haven't checked up on him, but, um, and, and I'm so thankful that she is bringing awareness to what the Scientologists do, which is encourage harassment, um, like abuses. And, and of course we know they, they harm children. They have oh, yeah. a sea orc where they send kids off to rot and do like physical labor and Lord knows what else is, is happening to them. So and like then you said, you... using their celebrity for good. And then if you fall out of line, they have these other special camps that they send you to that right. give you even more harsh punishment. So, mm-hmm. I mean, blockaded, uh, areas where like you can't get out of and yeah, whatnot. it's like a prison camp prison. Yeah. yeah. And that's exactly all it is. It's their own version of a prison camp. And I mean, talk about, you know, real cult tactics right there, literally entrapping their people physically. And then if you try to leave, mm-hmm. they will hunt you down and try to drag you back kicking and screaming, whether you want to or not. Yeah. So it's, 100%. it's definitely not a uh, religion quote unquote, that is out there to, let people be who they are or, you know, be free to worship and leave as they want. They definitely, definitely are a cult and they are one of the worst examples of it. Yeah. But I I don't think people realize how, how bad Scientology is and how rich they are and the kind of hold they have on. And I think specifically like Hollywood. Yeah. And it's, and this is actually one subject I, do generally tend to shy away from talking about on YouTube because they're very litigious in how they go after people. We should and make sure we're saying allegedly. Allegedly, Just yes. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> they're allegedly that's litigious. That's not even a joke. That, right, yeah. but, but that's not even a joke because no. my friend Liz Gale, who I did an interview with um, on Pious Placebo, I think you can find it on apostate coalition but she is a former third generation scientologist her brother unfortunately killed himself because of scientology and she is starting to get issues with them like what looking at her page reporting so yeah they don't like anybody speaking out no they don't i mean and just going by the 
shows, of course, because this is this is all documented on the mm-hmm. aftermath shows. They show how when Mike Rinder was living in his home, how they would literally be going through his garbage and yeah. they would have private investigators following him everywhere. Like, what are you trying to do? Like, what what is the whole point of this other than to make people live in fear to submit to what they want you to do? And that's all that is. Yes. Coercion, duress, harassment. Yeah. It, the name of the game is to get people to shut up. And what's even worse is that this religion operates in this country and gets away with it under the guise of their religious freedom. Oh, all you have to do is say, it's my religious freedom. Yeah. You do whatever. I mean, it's just absolute crap. Uh, Agreed. No worries. Um, do you want me to go into because this kind of ties into uh, the sound of freedom, which I was going to talk about. Um, well, unless you want to go first about the JW yeah, stuff. I just had to. My my wife was texting me because uh, she left something here. Don't care. Like, I do, and I better <laughs> care. You better. <laughs> Crystal so, will get you. You better care. I'm just kidding. She will get me. She knows where I live too. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. So Leah Remini is suing the Church of Scientology for harassment and defamation. And they, she says that they subjected her to psychological torture. And if you haven't, oh, who's the guy? Um, I don't know his last name. Aaron, he's the an ex-Scientologist. He has his own YouTube channel. Uh, oh, sorry. I'm not yeah, sure. I, but he actually has done some videos on this. Oh, uh, boy. I, I follow him too. Um, but if, if you see ex Scientologist on YouTube, go and find that and look it up. Growing up in Scientology is the YouTube channel. I just found it. I was looking at it right now. And uh, so he goes over the lawsuit, you know, with another lawyer and everything. But yet you can see here just some of the things that Leah says here in the article. For 17 years, Scientology and David Miscavige have subjected me to what I believe to be psychological torture, defamation, surveillance, harassment, and intimidation significantly impacting my life and career. I believe I am not the first person targeted by Scientology and its operations, but I intend to be the last. And that's what Leah said in a press conference. And there's a 60-page lawsuit that's laid out about this whole situation. So as far as this is all concerned, if all of these allegations are true, I hope she gets them for every red penny she can get them for. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. It's, it's about time. David Miscavige's face is some kind of, some kind of judicial system because uh, we'd like to know where his wife is. Yeah, exactly. Where's she at? Where's Shelly? Hashtag where's Shelly? You know, I mean, Miscavige, but I mean, And she's probably not the only person that's ever disappeared from Scientology. And then you got these other big celebrity Scientologists like Tom Cruise. Um, Oh, what's his name? Um, Uh, uh, The the actor that Danny Masterson, the one that just got arrested. (laughs) No, not not Danny Masterson. John Travolta. Thank you. Oh, yeah. John Travolta. John Travolta. Um, Christy Alley was one. Yeah. She actually, I think, possibly even died because she didn't want to accept any kind of cancer treatment because she thought she could just take care of it up in the, the old noggin. Exactly. And Pseudo you know, science Scientology. Yeah. Pseudo Scientology. Sound, <laughs> sound familiar. People dying for refusing medical treatments. Hmm, where do they hmm. do that at? I wonder where else they JWs. do that. Yeah. JWs. Blood transfusions. <laughs> <laughs> 
But, uh, and so, like I said, fully support her. If anybody can, has anything, knows anything, can help her out in any way, please do. Let's get this person, this organization be held accountable for what they do to others. Really? That's the whole name of the game. We want accountability. Because other, other people can, can join the lawsuit. Can they? I don't know. I, don't know I, I think that I, it might depend if it's a class action lawsuit or not. Mm. If it's a class because action. Have, yes. Then any, right. I'm wondering, I'm wondering if it could, I, I wish I knew better how the law worked. JW brain. Yeah. But I've seen, I follow a lot of people on TikTok where they show videos of like being harassed by Scientologists, just following them around, recording them. They'll just be standing there recording them. Yeah. Without a care in the world. <laughs> yeah. Scary. Those PIs must get paid some pretty damn good money too. And think about that. If you're in Scientology, spending your money on it, your money's going to things like that, the harassment mm -hmm. and abuse mm -hmm. of other people. Mm hmm. And you're probably told it's going to help people, just like yeah. the JWs are told, going exactly. to help people. Right. Lies. So let's let's go on. Let's talk about your movie here that you are giving me rave Soul reviews about. Like, like the best movie ever, right? Gun show. <laughs> oh yeah. Best <laughs> movie ever. Okay. So Sound of Freedom. I'm not I have like six websites here pulled up. I think they're all in the description if anybody wants to take a look see at them but um so if you have not heard the sound of freedom is a movie that was released i think in july i'm trying to pull up a website here it's getting rave reviews by certain culty groups of people namely a lot of QAnon people and there is heavy ties to um, Tim Ballard, to Cavazel. I think that's how you say his name, who is the main actor here. He was also in, I believe, The Passion of the Christ, which has yep. ties like to Mel Gibson. Like All of these people are um, tied together. And this guy is one of those who uh, puts out a lot. Uh, Cavazel, excuse me. I'm pointing like you know what I'm talking about. Um, has put out a lot of conspiracy theories again because they are tied to um QAnon. but what i wanted to discuss about this movie is i feel like it's going to be a distraction from what actually happened oh let me zoom. sorry i just realized i could zoom in on this a little bit what really happens when it comes to trafficking and I'll, I'll bring up a website shortly with like statistics so you can see where the issues really are. But my, my fear is that it's going to distract. And I wrote down some points because I read, like I said, about six to 10 articles um, over the past couple of days. Firstly, it's a really inaccurate depiction of human trafficking and where the problem is. So it will desensitize people to what's really going on behind the scenes. Many survivors of trafficking were trafficked by people that they know, um, by employers, by a family member, a relative, somebody in the church, so a police officer, somebody who works for um, the Department of like Social Services Children. Um, I don't know if it's called CYS, CPS, mm -hmm. but that's where we're seeing the bulk of child trafficking, not the over sensationalized embellished um, story that they used for the sound of freedom. Some guys just kidnapping you off the street, putting bags over your heads overseas. Sure. Does that happen? I'm not, I'm not saying that, but if we're focused on the wrong thing, we'll miss what's really happening. Um, Angel studios, the producers or whatever of the film have acknowledged that the film's depiction of child trafficking does not accurately represent real world trafficking methods. So they've actually admitted this, that there was a lot of creative liberties taken when they made this movie. Again, there's the connection to QAnon. Um, there's baseless claims that have been made about child trafficking in the movie and other conspiracy theories, again, connected to 
QAnon. Yeah, um, I like when they so, say that it's based on a true story. They should really say it's loosely based on a true story. Thank you, because it it really is. They've they've put a lot of you know fiction and whatnot into mm -hmm. this movie, and people are looking for exactly what's in this movie, not realizing that again it's their pastors, it's the the coach at school, it's it's the people that we trust every day who are trafficking our children and our friends, you know, people that we know, adults or or people that we don't know. Okay, so I've had this for long enough. I'd like to pull up the actual stats. Give me a second again. I have so many pages here. While, while you're doing that, can I say something in relation Please to this? Do. It's it, mm -hmm. and it it's really quite sickening, too. So, the, on and the um, Advocate website, there's this guy from Missouri who was part of the crowdfunding for this movie, and his he's one of the investors listed in the credits of this movie. Okay, Marta, Fabian Marta, and mm -hmm. he. He was charged with felony child kidnapping. So a person who's investing in this movie is participating in exactly what this movie is supposed to be about and the criminal activities of it. Like how, yeah. like when you see things like that, like why would you even want to trust anybody about this movie when you got people like that funding it? Right. And and that's the thing. This was like crowdfunded. This has a lot of support from, again, people who are in cults like QAnon, people who are in Scientology. This whole organization, um, Operation Underground Railroad, is started by Mormons. Like we already know that these people are in very suspicious groups that have very suspicious activity with a lot of money like in their wheelhouse, right? So they have the money to make these movies to distract us for a reason. Like if that, if you want to talk about conspiracies, that to me is the conspiracy is people who know better are explicitly exploiting people in order to divert our attention from what's truly happening. Okay, so mm -hmm. th this is why reading the statistics and uh, are so important. Okay, so from um, 2000, 21, there were 10,000 trafficking situations reported to the National Human Trafficking Hotline. In those situations, a total of 16,000 likely victims of trafficking were identified. The top three types of trafficking recording in 20, reported in 2021 were escort services, pornography, illicit massage, health, and beauty. So that's some of the top places where people who were trafficked, where they were um, traffic too. So, you know, if you're somebody who wants to help people, if you know of a, a massage parlor, that seems we've had a lot of crackdowns on them. If you know of a massage parlor and you think something suspicious, go find out. If you really care, find out. Um, okay. So victims are generally recruited by someone they know, such as a family member or caregiver, 33%, an intimate partner partner 28% and employer 22%. Y'all, this these are huge chunks. Mm -hmm. Huge. Mm -hmm. Th this this is not some guy standing, you know, in the bushes waiting to grab you. This these are people that you know and that you possibly work for, work for who are doing nefarious things. Um Hey, uh, Ryan, I'm sorry yeah. to interrupt you real quick, but no, no, uh, go ahead. Uh one of the commenters, my mom is saying that your screen is blurry. Oh, is it? Yeah, I don't know. It, if... Do I have a bad connection? I I or think you look. Mean, needs to be I think you look fine. I think the um, the screen for the tables might be a little bit out of focus. Is that any better? I enlarged it. It's, it looks okay to me, but I don't know. Yeah, it, and it looks fine to me too. So I I, I don't know. I. But anyways, go Luke ahead and Ryan continue. And the information. Okay, so she said all of us look bad. So I don't know. I it could be either her data or <clears throat> StreamYard is having an issue. Yeah, or maybe need a new prescription, Mom. <laughs> um. So anyway, if you all want to take a look at this data, you certainly are welcome to. 
uh, it because it also breaks down ages. It breaks down um, where these people were trafficked from, children, etc. Where they were trafficked to. Uh, hold on, I, there was one stat I wanted to show here. Which one was it? Sorry, y'all. Gives the race and ethnicity. Hold on. I want to look into. Okay, here we go. So this is where a lot of people are being trafficked from. Okay. So just take a look at this in 2021. I, can y'all see my mouse in the 2021 segment there? Maybe not. But this is where children are being taken from. Child we welfare system involvement, 188.4%. Um, caretakers. Uh, there was also welfare. Oh, Juvenile system involvement. So we're seeing children where they're supposed to be taken care of actually being pushed out into these horrible situations where they're being abused. So this is where we should be focusing on our infrastructure <clears throat> because our government should be able to help children who are in, you know, situations where they're being abused, but instead we're producing movies um, that has heavy connections to Mormons, to Scientology. Uh, another connection that I wanted to bring up, I'm just going to show share really quickly, and then I'll let you, oh, you jerk. I just closed a page that I didn't want to close. I hate when that happens. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Share this tab instead. Okay. So the act, one of the actors in the movie, his name is Eduardo, I believe. And the guy next to him is a rabbi, Rabbi Yehuda Meshi. So this beloved actor has these ties to this man who created an organization called Zaka, which was supposed to help people who have been harmed. Come to find out this rabbi has been assaulting children and had record like since 2011. And here's this beloved actor who's supposed to be all about helping children who are being trafficked, literally best friends with a person who's harming children. So again, that's why, you know, when you mentioned these ties, we really need to be careful about who is supporting this movie. Is mm -hmm. this just a distraction? Is this all to, you know, it's like, oh, look over here, look over here. But meanwhile, something bad is happening at the church where like this rabbi is a leader, right? Right. So that's why we need to look at the statistics. Please take a look at it. Um, and I think that's pretty much, oh, oh, no, wait, one more, one more thing. So also Cavazel, who is the actor, again, the main actor, he... Who's, who's one of the people who started the Operation Underground Railroad. He also is connected to Marisol Nichols, who has an or, a nonprofit organization called Slavery Free World, which Cavazel is also on the board. Okay? So we... Oh, I'm I sorry. Know. I... I it makes me really upset because these rich people start these nonprofit organizations and Cavazo has been accused of laundering money. So I, I don't doubt that all of these organizations are just laundering money. It's like when QAnon says, Oh, you need to follow the rabbit hole. Y'all need to follow the rabbit holes of your own shit too. <laughs> Cause this stuff is exactly, deep. exactly. That's, that's all. Uh, oh, and also I don't, I didn't know if you noticed this, but um, Marta, the guy that you mentioned, Marta, mm -hmm. Sugar Ball, that's one of the events he hosts. He teaches women, young girls. There's no age limit on here whatsoever. I'm not saying that there is or isn't, but he teaches young girls how to become sugar babies. Oh, geez. 
And yeah, for this those is his, who this is his don't thing. know what a sugar baby is, that is basically a guy who pays a younger girl to do things. Sugar daddy. For him or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, up to and including sexual acts. Exactly. Oh, and there's the dude's conviction, um, the the arrestment. Now, supposedly the arresting is just because he owns a property and he was allowing the mother to hide the children. So I I don't know. That's going to come out. But anyway. Yeah. yeah. All right. I think can that's we... all I have to say about that. Yeah. Let, I think can we, we need move to on to the move on. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a whole lot. Just go look it up yourself, people, and check it out. There, it's I got out links. There. Take She's a look, got take links. A look at the links in the know, description. Look for yourself. And, and you know, as always, come to your own conclusions on things. You know, you don't have to think the way we do. Come to your own conclusions. But oh, yeah, yeah, we'll yeah, yeah. give Please. you the information. Anyways, moving on. So we got the findings back from the charity inquiry from UK, from ICSA. So I'm going to go ahead and share this with you all now. This is some pretty damning stuff that um, they have. I'm going to just go straight to the conclusions on it because we all know that it was an inquiry about child protection policies in organizations and, you know, especially Jehovah's Witnesses in the UK. So, sure. Just a scotch. Thank How's you. How's that? That works for me. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to read it off word for word, some parts here. The commission concluded that the charity had a role in the production and dissemination of the JW's 2011 protection policy. However, by the time 2013 policy was published, the charity's role was limited to sharing its experience of working with the commission to produce the 2011 policy and facilitating engagement between the commission and the JW organizations, notice that's plural, in England and Wales. And I make mention of it being plural because we know the Jehovah's Witnesses have the CCJW. They have the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania. So they have all these different corporations that they use as like shell corporations. And they pass, they try to pass the buck around and don't ever really fall on to who's actually responsible for mm -hmm. anything. So that way they don't have to take responsibility for anything. And so by 2017, the charity had no role at all in safeguarding, including the production, dissemination, and practical implementation of the JW Child Protection Policy. The charity neither provides any services to children nor any services which they consider to be regulated activity. In addition, it no longer has a role in the dissemination of spiritual guidance and advice. This role was taken on by CCJW in 2011. Um. And then this goes on to say how the charity, the commission expects full disclosure and cooperations from the trustees of these charities because um, they are subject to a statutory inquiry. Um, and so really what this is showing is how much they're trying to just not take responsibility for their own policies that they've implemented the harm mm -hmm. that they're causing to children in this organization. But because they have all these shell organizations, they're able to duck and dive out of responsibility. But it looks like from what I'm seeing here and reading that the commission is basically trying to nail jello to a wall here, but <laughs> event eventually they're going to get a container and scoop them all up and say, look, all y'all suckers are going to be responsible for this because it's coming from one of you idiots and we're going to get it out of you. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what Sheesh. I really hope that they're doing. At least that 100. Many? Wow. I mean, really? I'm, I'm sure they, I knew God they had a damn. lot. I didn't know how many. Wow. Well, I mean, that would make sense because they probably have several in each country. Yeah. You know what I mean? To, or, to do this exact ducking and dodging. Yeah. And then, like, uh, if you recall back when uh, they did the Australian Royal Commission, they started talking to them about where they got their funds from. Well, then the corporation in Australia sent their money out to another country. 
Yeah. Oh, we're broke. We don't have anything. It's yep. all a game. It's mm-hmm. all a game they're playing. So they don't have to help those who need it the most. Yeah. I, you know, again, it baffles me at the way they'll take advantage of the law. And I, and I, in any way this, they want, I say this question, I feel like I'm beating a dead horse, but r- seriously, if you are supposed to be God's one and only true organization, you should be setting the example on how this shit is handled, not being just as bad or worse than every other corporation out there. Exactly. And the fact that you're just as bad or worse makes you no better, makes you just as culpable as the rest of Christendom that you so love to denounce all the time. Mm-hmm. Man-made organization. Yes, exactly. Point oh, proven. thank you, they, Sam. They I'm going to check out that link. Oh, thank you, Sam. So, Appreciate yeah. It. So f- um, for anybody who wants to see this report, it is included in the description of the video. So go check that out and you can read it for yourself and, you know, get the whole story of it. But this report is out and they have their conclusions and I can't wait to see what action is actually going to be taken against them to make them be responsible. Mm -hmm. Heck yeah. They need to take responsibility, be accountable, just like they forced their members to be accountable for their mishaps. The same should be expected of an organization that is led by God. They should show how it's done. Exactly. That's how I feel. If you truly want to be the shiny example, be it. Yeah. And it really is so simple. The solution is so simple. If, especially Mm -hmm. if you would have just done it from the beginning, Hey, we have an allegation of child sexual abuse. Call the cops. Handle it. Right. That's it. It's so right. simple. People okay. would know that you don't F around. Right. And then everybody in the congregation, especially since they implemented the registration of them, especially in the United States here, everybody in the congregation would know, hey, that person's a pedo. Get the hell out of here. I don't want my kid around them. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But no, they want to hide them. They want to cover it up. They want to shuffle around shell corporations. They want to do everything but the right thing. Everything but the right thing. Yeah. It's the truth. And that's why we speak out against this and want to expose them because we want to see them be held accountable for all the harm that they have been causing for countless generations right now. Yeah. We just want to see people, um, survivors thrive. And there really should be like social programs set up for people who have been harmed in order for them to be able to get the help that they need, you know? Yeah, exactly. They have all this money to build new congregations, but no money to help the people they've harmed. It's really sad. And once they start being held accountable and people start getting the help they need for it, then we'll really see what the true sound of freedom really is. Boom. Exactly. It's true though. Yeah. So anyways, do you have anything else for us today, Ryan? No, um, I do not. I do not have anything else. I think that was plenty. All right. Yeah. That's all I had for today too. So, Everybody, thank you for joining us for another week of Apostate Weekly, where we always tell you to apostate your way. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and hit those bell icons so you get notified when our next video is coming out. Of course, it's every week at 8 o'clock, so you should already know that by now. And if you don't, damn it, now you do. So even better. (laughs) So thank you all. We love you all. We'll see you next week, and I hope you all have a wonderful week. And take care. Take care. Listen to Baby Blessed.